Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway. Even simple open wagons are too expensive now, but never mind, I'm just going to make my own with a similar level of detail for a third of the price. Recently, Rapido released their new tooled Southern 8 plank open wagons, and these models look absolutely excellent, and I'm sure they are, except for one thing, and that is of course the price. The RRP for these wagons is £32.95, and at the retailers these wagons cost just over £28. Now, in a world where Oxford Rail wagons can still be purchased brand new for £10, £28 for a wagon just seems utterly ridiculous. Now, clearly there are differences. I'm sure the Rapido wagons are going to be higher quality than the £10 Oxford ones are. The SECR wagon that I looked at from Rapido certainly was. And Rapido's models are a little more niche because they are an accurate representation of that specific wagon, whereas I suspect the Oxford ones are a little more generic. And there are modelers out there who truly appreciate having a specific, accurate model of a Southern 8 plank wagon, and those people no doubt are willing to pay almost £30 for one. But not me, I would much rather have a more generic wagon that looks roughly correct, but costs a lot less. But what if you want both? What if you want that specific detail and you don't want to pay £30 for it? Well, the answer to me is obvious, resin 3D printing. So, my aim today, just as a bit of a test, is to create a Southern 8 plank wagon with my 3D printer that I can assemble and paint for £10. And then factoring in my time for the assembly and the painting and such, I can sell to my members for £19.99, about £10 less than the Rapido one. Now, I already have a chassis that I've designed that is the correct length, so my plan is going to be to create a detailed resin body which I can fit onto that FDM printed chassis. FDM I think is better for chassis because it's stronger and slightly less brittle. And once I've done that, I want to see how it compares to a Rapido model. And in order to do that, I bought one. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's defeating my own object really because I still ended up paying 28 pounds but I want to know whether a resin 3D printer can match this kind of level of detail, so it's important to have one, but I'm gonna look at this later on. First, we need to talk about the body design. So here it is, I created this in SketchUp using photos I found on the internet to come up with my own body design. And let me tell you, designing for resin is a joy because you can put as much detail as you want on there and the printer will have a pretty good go at replicating it for you. And as a result, I've been able to recreate every tiny part of this thing in immaculate detail. On the ends, I've managed to get these much finer, thinner sections to more closely mirror the real thing. I've got fine rivets on the model as well little bolts and washers that hold the relevant parts together. Not sure if the detail on these parts will be visible, but we'll have a look on the close-up lens later on. In other places, there are nuts, washers, and bolts modeled. I'm really looking forward to see how that looks. I know Rapido put detailed chains on their models, so I've added these to mine. Great challenge to model these, but I rose to it, and I think they look pretty good. And of course, it's got a detailed interior as well with all of the planking. Due to the slightly more brittle nature of resin, I can't just have self-tapping screws to hold this body onto the chassis, so I've designed actual screw threads into the body, which will allow me to fix this body ruggedly to a chassis. So that is the design complete. Let's get it printing and let's reveal the results. And here you go simple as that we have a detailed resin body of a southern eight plank wagon and on first glance it does look as though all of the chains and the little details have been really nicely replicated on this which is awesome and i will show you this up close in a little while but first i want to paint this i've come up with quite a clever and fast way of painting these and i'm going to show you what that involves so let's get the airbrush out 
and let's get painting. The first job is to paint the interior of the wagon and I'm using a sort of light brown colour for this so that it contrasts nicely with the outside of the wagon. I'm doing this on a turntable that I 3D printed as well and this means that I can keep my hands out of the way of the paint because if I've got to keep washing them that will slow me down. Next I want to paint the outside of the wagon and to do that I'm inserting this also 3D printed tool that fits on the inside of the wagon to hold it in place and also to cover up that light paint that I've just put on to act as a kind of mask. And now I can apply the darker brown paint to the outside of the wagon, first with the wagon upside down like this from all angles and then I can flip the thing over and paint it again from a different angle just to make sure the whole model is covered. And now I need to leave it to dry for a couple of minutes. Next, I'm going to apply all of the lettering in one go, and this is a simple process. I'm using magnets to fit this stencil onto the outside of the wagon, and that stays snugly in place while I apply the white paint. I'll leave this to dry for just a second, and then we'll pull those stencils off. I hope you're ready for this, because it is like magic. Let me take off the main mask and then the resin piece there we go nice crisp lettering now obviously is this as good as tampo printing no not quite but it is easier it's fast and much much cheaper so that you can do it at home right assembly so this is the chassis that is pre-prepared. I've already attached the buffers and all of the brake rigging, the couplings and the wheels to this. So it should be ready to screw right onto this, assuming of course that those screw threads do the job. So let's find out. Let's make sure we're lined up and let's screw these in. Yeah, I can feel it biting already, which is great. Second screw. Tighten them up. Right, we now have a complete wagon. So there we have it, the two Southern Railway eight plank wagons. Rapido's on the left, obviously, and mine on the right. And clearly these two wagons are not the same. They differ quite considerably. And on balance, obviously, Rapido's is better. It's professionally manufactured, I do think it's the better wagon overall, but obviously the homemade wagon is quite compelling as well. So let's talk about how these are different and also how these are the same. Let's talk about the differences first. The first difference is the chassis. The Rapido chassis is obviously a lot more detailed than my chassis, which is just a generic one. Now that's because I haven't designed a resin chassis yet, but could you? I think yes, provided you could get the axles into it without the axle boxes breaking. So all of the detail that you see here on the Rapido wagon could easily be done at home too. I just haven't done that on this occasion. Another difference is obviously the colour. The Rapido wagon is a much darker colour than mine, which is lighter. Although I have to say the colour of mine more closely matches the real life vehicle that I based it on. So I'm quite happy with that, frankly. The weights are slightly different. The Rapido wagon is the heaviest at 32 grams and mine is a little bit lighter by five grams at 27 grams. So if you prefer the heavier models, you would have to incorporate a metal weight into this if you want, but for me, 27 grams is fine. One surprising difference, or maybe it's not so surprising, I don't know, is that the Rapido wagon has visible paint slash glue all over it, which is fairly typical of professionally manufactured models. My model does not. And when you make your own models, you can obviously take the time and the care to make sure that there are no visible messes on your own stuff, which is something I will not miss with the professionally manufactured stuff. Let's compare some of the model's other features there. Now, obviously, the printing on mine is done via stencil, and the printing on Rapido's would have been done via a Tampo printing machine, I assume. Mine, I don't think, is quite as sharp as Rapido's. Yeah, again, not quite as good, but at a third of the price, I would say I'm quite happy with that. In terms of the actual detail on the bodies, though, I think they are a lot closer. Let me show you the chains. Yeah, kind of similar, aren't they, in the level of detail. And I must say, when it comes to the sort of rivets and nuts and bolts and such, 
I do think mine are quite a bit finer. And bear in mind, this Rapido wagon is one of the finest detailed wagons you can get. That's why they're so expensive. And yet there's not a huge amount of difference in the level of detail possible between injection molding professionally like this and 3D printing very cheaply at home. I mean, they are comparable and any differences you can see really are down to just the CAD design and my ability. So 30 pounds and a nice wagon or 10 pounds, a little bit of effort and a much more affordable wagon. Which would you prefer to go for? Please do comment down below. So in my opinion, this could be the start of a real change in this industry. It could be the start of a change in the role that professional manufacturers play. Previously, before this technology became available, the manufacturers with their injection moulding machines were able to produce models that it was nigh on impossible to produce at home without an incredible amount of work. Today though, for the price of about 20 of these Rapido wagons, I have purchased all of the equipment I need to produce an indefinite number of wagons myself at home with a very comparable level of detail, limited only really by my own abilities, and I'm confident that this will all improve with practice. So what could this mean for the manufacturers moving forwards? Well, if this catches on and a lot of people do this, the manufacturers will no longer be creating things that it is impossible for us at home to create. They'll basically be saving us a job. And will they be able to charge what they do now when we can do the same thing at home with a little bit of work for less money? And don't forget, once this stuff is designed and you've got those files, you can create as many models as you want. And let's say there's a marketplace where people can design models. I could put this wagon of mine on there. You could buy the design for 10, 20 quid, something like that. And then you could run a rake of 20 of them off for much less than the price of 20 Rapido wagons. So what do you think about this? Do you think this will catch on or is it too specialist? One thing that does seem true though, is that if small businesses, small people like me can create this stuff, it is gonna mean even more competition for the manufacturers. And them responding by driving up their prices is not going to help them. Anyway, this was a really fun project. It's given me a lot of confidence as to what is possible with this resin 3D printer. I think next I'm going to have to look at chassis. Can I create a resin printed chassis? Because then these two models would be much, much more similar to each other, making the level of detail pretty much identical. But that's for another time. This is pretty much a proof of concept and the concept is very much proved. So thank you for watching. I'll catch you very soon. Cheers, everybody. You take care.